22. That's 22 around. Gosh dang, look at that, dude. That's fantastic. Good morning. We're pulling out the irrigation gun here today. There is a chance of rain and it's quite overcast, cloudy, like it feels like it could rain today, but there's nothing really close to us at the moment. So we'll see if we happen to get any, that'd be great. Uh, but I've got this run and one more to do to have covered this whole field for the fifth time. So we're gonna get those two done at least. Um, I'm gonna go down and look at the other end of the field at some point today, see what things uh, look like down there and whether we need to start over on the other end. There's three runs on the north end of this field that I have not done uh, since the last rain. Everything else has been done since Sunday. Uh, today's Friday, so that's that's good, and we probably don't need to start going over those again. But we'll see. Depends on if we get rain today or not, I suppose. A um, few other things going on today that uh, I'll show you guys. Uh, I'm going to go over and give you an update on the project where Dad's working. Uh, with the uh, pans and moving dirt and stuff. I might take the drone over and give you some aerial shots of that too. So um, we'll see about that. And uh, depending on the weather, depends on what else we do. We might spray, I don't know, maybe. Phil's been getting wheat cleaned, so we might check in on that. And uh, yeah, I don't know, but we'll find something. So got to get this run uh, made. This is a, a little bit shorter run. I think it's going to take seven hours, six and a half, seven hours, something like that. So I just started up my pump generator right over there, I'm waiting for it to build pressure and I was walking here and I saw these ragweeds. Anybody allergic to ragweed pollen? Oh my goodness, look at it. Wow, they're coated in that stuff. Those leaves are not supposed to be yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed it on the log. That's what I was like, where did, where did all that come from? Yeah, it's all ragweed pollen. All right, we're back at the farm here. I thought I'd give you a few updates on things since I was gone yesterday and didn't do much the day before filming wise, but uh, show you what couple projects we've got going on or getting stuff ready. Phil unhooked the uh, field cultivator over there that uh, I was using the other day. And you got our drills hooked up. This is uh, what we plant our wheat with. They're a set of 1560 double drills. You guys haven't really seen me use these yet, but uh, getting them ready. Uh, we've got to just kind of go through stuff and make sure that nothing's broken, bearings, nothing's wore out, and grease it before we're ready to plant wheat, which is still a month off yet, but uh, we'll go through it. I don't know how much. Well, it probably needs quite a bit of work. Uh, these are getting sort of wore out, but we don't plant much with it, so we kind of limp it along every year i guess you would say eh, it's not that bad but uh it does need to be gone through and some bushings replaced and, and sort of rebuilt at some point but i don't know if that'll happen this year or not oh and then over here dad had some seals go out on a couple of cylinders on the pans uh, there's a cylinder that goes from that point to that point that uh, helps to lift it and dump the the, uh, the pans. You can see the one over there on the other side. Seal was leaking on it, so he took that one off, took the one off of this one, which was leaking as well, and took them to a cylinder shop uh, not too far from here. They were going to go through them and put new seals in for us. So uh, so this project is, well, it's not really the project's not on hold because Dad's using the other pan, the, the 8300 and the small one. But uh, yeah, he said he did get it quite a bit done before they broke over there though, so we'll go over and check that out here in a little bit. Okay, it's getting warm out, but um, it's too windy to spray, so I can't do that today. I'm still hoping some rain blows up. It's not as cloudy and overcast as it was earlier today, but uh, there is still some stuff to the north and to the west that maybe we'll get some, we'll see. Uh, anyway, we're going to go do some crop scouting here and look around for... Uh, a while, see what things are looking like, and see where our corn's at growth stage wise. So, I'm heading back to the first field of corn that I had planted this spring. It's 108 day corn. Uh, I expect it to be dented, and we'll see. We'll see where it's at. Looking pretty dry here. 
hurting big time. You can get out here a little farther, it's not quite so bad, but uh, boy, we sure could use some rain. You'll notice that we've got husks starting to dry down. Basically what is happening is this plant is these plants are sensing, hey, we're, we don't have near enough moisture. We got to do everything we can to finish out these kernels, make them viable so that they will grow. And so it's cannibalizing itself. It's pulling nutrients out of these lower leaves and sending them into the kernels, into the ear. Uh, it'll preserve the top leaves as long as possible because they're the ones that are doing all the photosynthesis and catching all the sunlight and stuff. But uh, it's it's sensing that it's, it's about time to shut down and uh, uh, it's running out of water, it's running out of nutrients because it can't get nutrients without water. And so that's what we're seeing here. That's why these husks are dying back because husks are not critical. They're not doing photosynthesis, but we are dented. Let me pull this ear back. Okay, so this hybrid is 108 day, it's 08M20. This is the one, if you watched my plot video a couple of days ago, it's the one that throws the really crooked, strange rows. You can see it in this ear. This one's not so bad. That one's really crooked. That one's better. I don't, why one or the other, I don't know. But um, it's not uh, it's not variety contamination either because this was the first field of corn that I planted. So it was the only thing that had been in the planter to that point. Um, these ears aren't terrible. I mean, that one's not real long. This one's pretty nice. This one's a little short and stubby. That one's a really nice ear. This one's average, not, not great. But you'll notice um, there's a lot of kernels on the tips here that uh, aborted off. And you can kind of see... Yeah, you can really see it on this one um, where, you know, these are obviously the kernels that filled out. And then you've got these shriveled up ones that still got some yellow or some size to them. Those ones pollinated, but then the plant decided, ah, crap, I don't have enough water. I'm not going to make it. So let's kill those ones off to protect the rest of them. And it, they aborted. And then these ones on the tip here where they don't have any size to them, uh, those ones just never pollinated. They never even got started. Uh, you can see the same thing here aborted and never pollinated in the good kernels so um let me break an ear in half here kernels are fairly deep they don't look terrible uh what do we got here two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen around i'll take that and uh one thing you'll notice so i've talked about this a couple of times uh, but after our corn dents, it gets what is we call a milk line. And you can watch this milk line progress throughout the ears as it's getting closer to maturity. And so if you look at the top half of this ear, you'll notice a change in color in these kernels right there. And I don't know if I would call this one quite 50%, maybe two-thirds, 66%. It's more than three-quarters. Um, but basically, that is the line in the kernels. Um, that separates the hard starch from the milk. So if I break one of these kernels on the end here, you'll notice that it's, if I can get that right, here we'll look there, it's uh, it's hard, it's not soft, juicy material anymore, it's, it's starches, it's still got a lot of water in it, it's still plenty wet, um, but it's not milky, and if I try and puncture one of these kernels below that milk line, you should see a bunch of milk and, yeah, juice, that comes out of there and squeezes out. And so that's the that's the line between the hard starch and the milk. And when that line gets all the way down to the base and the tip of the kernel, that's what we call black layer. And this corn is considered physiologically mature. It'll still be really wet uh, and have a lot of drying down to do, but we're done at that point. You're not gonna get any more bushels, any more yield if the rain doesn't, nothing's gonna help or hurt that ear at that, well, I shouldn't say hurt because windstorm or anything dislodging it where we can't harvest it will hurt it, but uh, you're not gonna get any more bushels after black layer. Okay, we're in a different field now. Uh, this is a different hybrid, but it was planted the same day as that last one. This is one of my 109 days, 09A86. We're seeing some of the same stuff here, although not as bad, at least right here. Maybe worse up there a little farther. Uh, a lot of sunlight making it to the ground here. Interesting. Um, but anyway, we'll pull some ears back here and take a look. Boy, for as dry as it is, this corn looks pretty good, to be honest. I mean, this ear's not great. This one's sort of short, but there's a lot of rows on it. This one's nice. These three are nice. That one's not bad. I mean, these, this... It looks pretty good for considering how incredibly dry we are right now. Um, and it is dented at 109 day. Let's break it apart. 
So this one, the milk line's not quite as far down the kernels. Not a lot of difference, but it's just, it's not quite as far down. Um, cobs look good again. Ears, ears are nice. What do we got? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 around again. Not bad. We're getting there. I was able to split a kernel lengthwise, and I don't know if I can get my phone to focus. That. Yeah, not real well. I'm trying to show you the difference in the tip here that's starchy and this stuff that's softer, but it doesn't focus real well. I was coming up past my plots here, and I uh, stopped to grab a Gatorade to drink and uh, I haven't I didn't show this the other day in my plot video but I've got this little grow box thing here that's supposed to show the roots it's never worked real well because apparently you got to cover that up to keep the algae and roots growing along the glass and anyway I never planted it this spring my thought was well I'll put some beans in there right before my field day so that they'll be coming up and I can show the seed treatment differences <laughs> and uh, check it out this box has Celtro treated beans in it one, two, three, four of the five that I planted. Oh, there's number five coming right there. This one has the Olivo beans. We've got one, two. Don't see any of the other three yet. But look at the cotyledons already. Nice and green. They need some water. I'll water them right now. I've been watering them. Um, nice and green. Not bad. Look at that one. Look at it. Burning them up already. We're seeing the exact same thing we saw this spring in the field, which is what I expected. And that was the whole point to show that off for guys and why Saltro is better than Elevo because of that right there. There, I watered them so they can keep growing. You can watch it soak down through the front. Maybe they'll get some natural rain on them too. I don't know why the germination difference here. That surprises me that only two of those have come up and basically five of those have. Uh, there sh that, shouldn't, that shouldn't be there, but it is. Okay, let's look at some soybeans. They're turning. Harvest is coming. Clearly the dry weather has, has cut their life a little bit short here. Uh, you can see down in the low ground, they're quite a bit greener. That's, that's normal, we're always gonna have that. Um, but these beans are definitely maturing, they're ripening up, they're starting to get brown pods. Uh, I'd have to look at a growth stage chart to see what they consider this, but uh, R6, I believe, R5, R6, something like that, which is getting to be the end of it. So uh, if you look at the plants, you'll notice the pods are starting to turn brown, yellow, especially on the bottom here, and uh, yeah, that's it's 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 not a bad thing, but they're just they're not gonna be very good. So the beans, the beans are still big, they're but they're turning from green to brown. The moisture is starting to come out of them. They're shrinking, and uh, they're not hard yet by any means, but they're getting to that point where they're gonna be hard and dry beans. So. Yeah, we've got, we've, yeah, this pot here was a three beaner, but the top one aborted, it's soft, there's nothing there, bottom two will make it, and this one's good, that one's got three, pot's cracking apart, yep, those ones are a little bit farther along, still not dry, but they're more brown, harder, so, yeah, I, this is one of the farther along spots, so it'll be a while yet, but three weeks, I would say. Three weeks. We'll be combining beans. Which means I should probably be working on the combine today. We don't have a ton to do to it, but we gotta get our concaves back in at least. And what else? I don't think much to the combine, but the bean head we might have to do a fair amount to, so we probably got two or three days worth of work on that, looking at draper belts and stuff, so... It's on the list. Maybe next week. Although if it rains, we're going to be working on cover crop stuff because that's kind of priority right now. So we've got time to get the combine ready, but at some point it's going to become priority number one. Okay, now we're up in the field where Dad's been moving some dirt. He's 
layered some black stuff in up here by the road. We'll go back and see what it looks like in the hole back here. Yeah, got a bunch out there spreading it out across the slopes and the top of the hill. He's gotten a lot more pulled out from this area than the last time I was here. Boy, that's thick in there. He's piled in a bunch of dirt. And about right here is where we're gonna stop farming. And he's trying to make a little bit of a ditch because there's a ditch over there that uh, is where the water's gotta go to eventually. So we're gonna try and surface drain it that way. Been digging stuff out. He did pretty good here. I'm, I'm, yeah, he's done really good. He took a lot out of there. Let's see what stuff's over here is like. That's the hole is kind of where he got stuck there, I believe. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, back here, he took a bunch of dirt out. Layered in some up in here, kind of all along the woods there, trying to build that up, keep the water, surface water out of the woods from pond and along the edge there. You'll also notice our clover grew back pretty well. Uh, this was that field we put chicken litter on and just disked it and tried to not take out all the clover. We did a good job. We mixed it in. You can see the ground is rough where it's been stirred up, but we didn't go so deep to uproot the clover and it's growing back flower and looks good. Uh, we'll give her another month or so and then it'll be time to kill it and work it under. I promise I'll get the drone over here at some point. Might not be today though. So I was just driving down the road here and I noticed something and this is not our cornfield. We're not going to walk out in there but just looking at it from the road. Um, you see those ears hanging down there? Once those ears tip over they're done. That pinches the base of that stalk off and you're not getting any more nutrients or anything in there no matter what. So even though that corn, it's not dead, it's not fired all the way up and burn up, but those ears are done. And I don't know what corn it is, I don't know what maturity is, I know what brand it is because there's a sign up here around the corner. But uh, that's, I don't want my corn to be finished in August, that's not a good thing. Back up here in the... Uh, irrigation field it's almost time for lane change it's not quite done yet but uh, I was gonna walk out here and grab an ear of this stuff this is 109 day we'll see what it looks like two things I noticed real quick one look at that filled out right to the tip we don't have any tip back on this and two it's not dented as much we're starting to dent but it's not every kernel this is the same 109 day that we looked at a little bit ago uh, in one of those other fields. Planted, this was planted later, a week, week and a half later, so that's probably part of it. The ear itself isn't that much bigger, um, but this is one of those fixed hybrids that doesn't vary as much, so it's population driven. And in that other field, I had planted it at 32, 33,000. Here, I planted it at 36, 37, 38,000. So there's a lot more ears up here, so should be better corn. That's a nice ear. Not really able to see a milk line, maybe just barely at the tip of those kernels, but it's got a ways to go yet, which is why we're still pumping water. Also, uh, there's some clouds starting to build, some showers starting to pop up. We may catch one, but nothing yet. All right, we're making the last pull of the fifth pass on this field. We have, uh, We've pumped a lot of water, almost, when this one's done, almost 15 and a half million gallons of water. Uh, we've covered 660 acres, 135 times basically, something close to that. And this is run number 89, I believe. No, nope, just double check that. Run number 85, 86, 86. Uh, 86th time I pulled this gun out. That's 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 a lot. So all right, we're gonna get this one up and running, and then I'm gonna go drive down and look at the other end of the field, see what things look like. So this is the first run that we made on Sunday when we restarted it again after the last rain that we got. And uh, it's there's there's still moisture here, so we're not behind yet. Although it's not real wet, I was kind of hoping it would be a little bit moister out in here. There's still some moisture there. 
So I don't know, we'll see. Hopefully we get some rain and it doesn't matter, but dang, we've got some clubs on here, don't we? Well, look at them things. That's a long, long ear. Impressive. Well, it is dented a little bit. We can see that. This is 112 day corn, different variety here. And uh, different ear type, not quite so pretty from a rose around standpoint. This one does its this one does its thing in length and size of kernels. So just different. Doesn't mean better or worse, just different. Um, but she's got a ways to go to, right? There you can see a little bit of that milk line. It's 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 kinda raining. Kinda. Almost. Does that count as rain? I haven't had to turn the windshield wiper on yet. Alright, let's do a little more crop scouting before it's time to go home. Bean field here. Uh, these are a 27 2788s. This field has looked fantastic all year. So this field was actually wheat last year. It got chicken litter put on it a year ago, and then we planted it to beans, which is unusual. Usually we won't do that. We'll only plant it to corn after that. Um, but with our crop rotations being all screwed up last year, this one went back to beans. Uh, it was a pretty good experiment. And they've had great color all year. They've looked really good. And they're just starting to lighten up, turn yellow, like they're starting to mature. This was planted fairly early, so I'm not surprised by that. Uh, they're at 2.7 maturity, so a little bit fuller season than the other field that's turning. Those were two twos. Um, well, let's take a look. Got some decent pods all up and down the stems. They're not loaded, what I would consider, but they're decent. This one's a good four beaner. Here's another one that the top one, eh, it might get there, it might not. Um, but yeah, those, those, those don't look bad, nothing to complain about there. The uh, leaves are showing a little disease, a few holes, nothing too terrible, certainly nothing to worry about at this late stage in the game. Uh, yeah, yeah, they look good. Can't complain about these. Not bad. This bean is one that we typically consider a shorter bean, and they're they're you know they're mid thigh on me. They're not waist high like some of our other ones, so they are a little bit shorter. But having them planted early, I think, uh, helped them get a little bit more height to them. And uh, boy, there's a lot of nodes. You like to see them stacked together where the beans are just overlapping each other, the pods. Even at the top, they do stretch out some, but not a lot. Nice. Ah, I broke the roots off. I'm trying to uh, tempt fate a little bit here by going out and scouting with these threatening looking rain clouds like it might actually rain, but they're kind of right over us and, well, it ain't raining. It's not promising. It's raining to the south, but farther south than any of our fields. Not much I can do. I want to go look at uh, some of our replant corn, see what that stuff was looking like, where it's at maturity-wise, since uh, we've seen some of the earlier planted stuff and where that milk line's at. I'm guessing we won't find a milk line in the replant. I'm guessing it's not even dented. Uh, well, let's go find out. Okay, so this is one of those fields that we replanted the whole thing, tore the corn out, started over. I don't remember what day it was, but it had to be the first week of June or very, very end of May when we replanted this. And uh, honestly, it doesn't look great. It's short, it's firing, it's rolled. It needs some water. Although look at this, this is cool. So about an hour, an hour and a half ago was when I was driving home and we got that little bit of rain. It registered a hundredth of an inch on our rain gauge a mile from here. <laughs> the leaves on this corn plant funneled it all right down to the base. Look at that, that's cool. It's still a hundredth of an inch and not gonna do anything but the corn plants do everything they can to soak that up and, and make the most of it. So it looks a little better here than it does that way. I don't know if there's some compaction right towards the ends here or what the deal is, but this does look a little bit better down here. So that's good. Let's pull some ears back. Well, that is actually, those are impressive. For what this was and when it was planted, 
This one here is just starting to dent. I don't see that dent. Eh, they're just, just barely starting to on these. That's good. This is 100 day corn. 00H12 is what I use for replant here. And honestly, I'm thrilled with this. That looks way better than I expected it to. Still gonna be late and wet and some of the last stuff that we harvest most likely, but better than I thought it would be. Well, slow down a second. So remember what those ears we looked at earlier looked like as far as the kernel depth and stuff? That's where we're losing here. Those kernels are tiny. And I know there's a ton of rows around. How many rows we got on this one? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. That's 22 around. Gosh dang, look at that, dude. That's fantastic. But they are still pretty little kernels. I don't know how that one's gonna do. 22 around. Wow. All right, so now I'm in a different area of what was essentially that same field. We're on the other side of the building, so a um, little different area. But this was part of it that I did not replant, that we didn't tear out because we thought the stand was good enough. It's clearly pretty thin here compared to where we were at, but it's not bad. Uh, this is one of my old standby really good corns, 110-day uh, hybrid, 10T63, that I really like. And uh, we're going to pull an ear back here, too. This one's a different ear type than that last one. This is one of them long, skinny ear ones. You can see we've got quite a bit more tip back. Uh, that's a pollination timing thing. It was drier when we pollinated this than the other stuff. We must have caught a rain at the right time for that replant corn. Uh, these are all aborted kernels that they pollinated and then they died off. Uh, this is farther along. It's got pretty good dent to it for 110 days. This would have been planted that first week of May. I didn't look up the exact date. Third, fourth, second, somewhere in there. Um, but nice long ears. They're not bad. Let me see if I can break this. Just barely a milk line, not much, which we expect after given what we've seen on the other stuff uh, today. Um, not as many rows around. That's just that's how genetics. But the kernels are a little bit deeper, bigger here. So who knows? Stands not as good. Right call or not? I don't know. We'll find out when the combine rolls. This corn's hurting. You can see it firing up. It's it's not. <laughs> Expectations are to be lowered. Let's put it that way. I've been looking for disease out here and honestly haven't been able to find much. But there is a stripe of uh, northern corn leaf blight. Not severe by any means, but there is a little bit out here. Uh, just haven't seen much, and I'm I'm sure that is a dry conditions symptom of you know just disease usually favors wet and we have not been wet that may be a speck of gray leaf spot but when it's just one spot like that you don't worry about it it's gotta gotta pretty well destroy the leaves before you see much problem from it and a speck or two here and there is certainly not enough to be concerned with all right so we're in another field here now this one is a uh, 09 y24 although it's got some other restuff that was peppered in for replant but where we're standing is 09 y24 uh, which is a uh, Agrisher Artesian hybrid, should handle the drought just a little bit better. But I want you to see how quickly things can change here. Really good, really crappy, pretty good. And now I'm looking at this spot and I'm like, what is going on here? And I know exactly what is going on here. Okay, so you see where we're at in this field? You see them trees right there? That's a building site. Right over there is our driveway that we haul all of our grain out of. Or not all, most. Where do you think we park the trucks when we harvest this field? Right there along those trees. And heading out the driveway. Well, so when we're harvesting this field, guess what? Grain cart comes from over there, comes down the ends, comes down this way, turns right here to line up with the trucks. This path goes from there to there is right where we were turning with the grain cart every time that is compaction 100 percent. i guarantee if we come out here with a shovel you'll see it in the roots of this corn versus that corn fascinating not fascinating i know that's what happens but there's just nothing you can do about it but that's why we drive in the same spot all the time to keep it concentrated to as small a zone as possible and not spread out over the whole area and field but this corn's done I mean, those ears are hanging uh 
That's that's compaction. I'm sure we could follow this and watch watch it curve right back out there to where them uh, trees are and where we park the trucks. Wow. Yeah, definitely. Ah, interesting, but not good. So in this cart path that's uh, dried up and stuff, we go from these tiny little nubbin ears here. That uh, they're done. They're they're probably done. Let's look at a milk line. Well, it's still got a little ways to go, but definitely about 50% milk line on this one. Two, we'll go down here and this good stuff. Pull some ears. To ears that look like this. Much, much better. That one I broke off when I was peeling it. It wasn't hanging down like that. You can see they're all upright. Nice, fat, filled out, impressive ears. Really not much farther behind from a milk line standpoint. But these are going to yield a whole heck of a lot more here. Here's a spot with some of the replant corn. This is 103 day, uh, 03R40 for replant. These don't look bad. They're decent ears, but they're not dented yet. You can see these got a ways to go. They're behind. Kernel size looks like it's going to be smaller. Definitely going to be smaller. Just it just didn't have time. That's why we don't plant corn in June. But it's better than a bare spot here with nothing. So, yeah, that's that's what five and a half inches of rain a week after you plant, and then no rain through July and August does for you. One last thing before I go home, Phil did get uh, our wheat cleaned. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's not bad. We got most of the chaff out. Should go through the planter just fine so we'll have to get some wheat treated here pretty soon we're gonna do that after Labor Day I think all right well that's it for today got a little crop scouting in things look better than I was expecting for the most part there's some crappy corn there's some some of the beans are aborting pods and not gonna be great but there's nothing I can do about any of it so uh, it is what it is that irrigation is going to be done at 8 o'clock tonight, and since I have to move clear to the other end of the field, I'm going to forget it for tonight. Um, we'll see if we happen to catch some rain yet. There's still a chance, but we didn't get any out of those big, scary-looking clouds, so what are you going to do? Um, so it's not looking good. We'll probably make those last three runs on the north side, uh, and, then, and then we'll be able to wait a little bit. There's more chances of rain in the middle of the week, so... Um, that's the plan there tomorrow is saturday i'm not planning on working tomorrow so probably won't make any videos until next monday so till tuesday will be the next one comes out uh there's a chance maybe tomorrow but we'll, we'll see um so anyway have a great night have a great weekend if you have any questions and comments leave them down below and uh yeah hit that like and subscribe buttons for me please wasn't that x9 cool oh man that was awesome see you guys